In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, congestive heart failure, which is also known as CHF. Uh, CHF is basically a syndrome of ventricular dysfunction, and uh, in layman's terms, it means when the heart is unable to pump uh, enough blood um, with each beat to meet the oxygen requirements of the heart and other body tissues. Um, I think it's important to talk about CHF uh, with a little uh, diagram and that diagram will probably be the best way to explain what exactly is going on in CHF. So what I'm going to do is draw a heart here. Now this is not what the heart actually looks like but for purposes of instruction it's probably the best way to explain it. So these uh, four boxes represent the four chambers of the heart and what I'm drawing here are the vessels that the blood travels through and here we go so this is the right atrium this is the left atrium this is the right ventricle this is the left ventricle and uh, there's valves here this is the tricuspid valve uh, I don't have enough space to write out the full word but uh, this there's a valve here also and that valve is called the pulmonic valve uh, there's a valve here as well, and this one is called the aortic valve. And then there's a valve here as well, and this one is called the mitral valve. Now, uh, blood travels in this direction. I probably use the red uh, to explain the, the direction in which blood travels. Now, what's this here? Well, this is the lung. Now, blood does go to the lung to pick up oxygen, remember. And then once the blood has oxygenated it travels back uh, to the left atrium and then eventually into the left ventricle and the left ventricle is actually what we're going to talk about uh, there's another vessel that uh, the blood eventually exits uh, the heart and that is called the aorta getting back to CHF what's CHF well CHF basically is when this left ventricle is not pumping out enough blood with each beat. So what's actually happening here? Well when the blood travels from the left atrium to the left ventricle it starts to accumulate in the left ventricle and when it's accumulating this valve, the aortic valve, is closed. Right before the valve opens the amount of blood that's in the left ventricle is called the end diastolic volume and diastolic volume. Now, after that phase is over, this aortic valve will open back up. It'll open up, and then once it opens, it allows the blood to start leaving the left ventricle into the aorta to the rest of the body. Well, then, you know, the volume of the blood starts to decrease, but it doesn't decrease entirely it decreases a little enough with each beat so that the aorta has a supply of blood to pump out to the rest of the body and then the aortic valve closes back up again now the amount of blood that's left in the left ventricle after the aortic valve closes back up again is known as the end systolic volume end systolic volume well, this is what CHF is. CHF is basically talking about what's the stroke volume. Well, the stroke volume is the end diastolic volume subtract the end systolic volume. That is what we're talking about. And really, you have to figure out a ratio called the ejection fraction EF, which is the end diastolic volume minus the end systolic volume divided by the end diastolic volume. And this number, this calculation, will tell you if a person is in a state of heart failure or not. Now the normal ejection fraction in a person is between 55 and 70 percent. Uh, I've seen you know even higher than 70 percent. In CHF, I'll write it over here, the ejection fraction will be less than 50. 
So, in a very simple way to explain it, the heart is not beating out enough blood with each beat. I'll quickly draw the diagram again. I'm not going to draw all the details again, but really, really quickly. Uh, when, when the heart is not beating out enough blood with each beat, what happens? I mean, what is the compensatory mechanisms? Well, if you have an ejection fraction of less than 50%, which is what CHF is really all about, this left ventricle starts to work harder because it wants to pump out more blood but it can't so one of some of the compensatory mechanisms is that it starts to hypertrophy and that's what I'm really trying to illustrate here by making these thick lines another thing that starts to happen and we'll talk a little bit about this uh, later is that some of the fluid in the in the in the blood starts to back up into the lung and it can even back up all the way into the uh, lower, all the way down to the lower extremities, to somebody's feet. So that's a very, very basic, uh, uh, quick uh, way of uh, talking about the definition of CHF. Now, why does this happen? Well, what is the causes? You know, what is the etiology? Why is somebody developing this? Well, there's several reasons. One of the reasons is coronary artery disease. Another one is high blood pressure. Another one is valvular heart disease. That's a that's a big one. Uh, valvular heart disease, uh, because the valves, as you saw in that previous diagram, are very important in this process. Another reason is cardiomyopathy, cardiomyopathy CM, and then pulmonary hypertension is another cause. So these are some of the causes, risk factors of get, developing CHF. Well then, how does somebody present? How does somebody present with uh, CHF? What are some of the symptoms? Well, a lot of this, uh, a lot of the symptoms are actually common sense. I mean, if fluid is backing up into uh, your lungs, you will have difficulty breathing, dyspnea. This is a very, very uh, a big presentation. Now, unfortunately, it's very non-specific because you can have dyspnea with many other conditions. But there's ways of narrowing it down, and I'll explain a little later. A person can start coughing very tired why are you tired well because the body's not getting enough blood and the blood carries oxygen and nutrients and when you're not getting enough blood you'll be tired uh, another thing we talked about a little a little earlier was the swelling the lower extremity edema this is a very very uh, common presentation another thing you have is orthopnea now mo some of you remember orthopnea basically <clears throat> refers to um, where a person has difficulty uh, breathing and they need to use more pillows. It's kind of a positional. Uh, it's a positional type of dyspnea. And then another thing uh, you have is a really cool term, PND, uh, paroxysmal uh, nocturnal dyspnea. And this term is really cool. What does it mean? Well, it means sudden nighttime difficulty breathing. Uh, so these are some of the symptoms of CHF. Now let's talk about diagnosis. How do you diagnose this? I mean, if somebody presents uh, with those symptoms, how do you know for sure that it's CHF? Well, there's a few uh, very important diagnostic uh, modalities, and by far the most common is the echocardiogram. Why is this the most important? Because this will tell you the eject ejection fraction. This test will tell you what the ejection fraction is, and like I mentioned previously, the ejection fraction, by definition, in CHF will be less than 50%. The normal uh, is uh, between 55 and 70. You know, by far the most important test. There's other tests to uh, to diagnose CHF. Um, I'll put diagnosis here. Uh, there's a you can do a chest X-ray. Chest X-ray is not very specific, but it, it probably shows some cardiomegaly. As, as I mentioned earlier, the, the heart can hypertrophy in CHF. Uh, another thing is that you can do an, an EKG. You might see some com comorbid uh, conditions like atrial fibrillation. Uh, not always, though. Um, another really important test uh, that I wanted to talk about to diagnose CHF is a blood test. And that blood test is called the BNP. Notice N, not BMP. BNP. Now what is this? Well, BNP stands for beta type natriuretic peptide. 
Now, this is a hormone that you can measure with a blood test, and it's a hormone released from the heart uh, when the ventricles are distended due to increased volume and pressure. And in CHF, this BNP will be can be greater than 400. Uh, normal uh, BNP is less than 100. So this is actually a very important test uh, that can differentiate between uh, other medical conditions that cause a difficulty breathing. So for example, if somebody comes in with dyspnea and you're trying to rule out you know, COPD, well, if the person has COPD, their BNP will probably be less than 100. But if they have dyspnea due to CHF, their BNP will be probably greater than 400. So that's a really important blood test. There's other blood tests too, but this is probably a very specific one, the BNP. Uh, to list all the other blood tests that you can do, there's the CMP, uh, CBC, and then there's the thyroid tests as well that uh, you can uh, uh, test um, in the workup of CHF. All right, now finally we get to the treatment, the treatment of CHF. Uh, how do you treat this? Well, before we get into the drugs or medications, there's just basic, you know, uh, lifestyle modalities. There's sodium restriction, you know, salt restriction. Um, there's a weight loss. Um, and correct the underlying disease, underlying um, conditions. Um, these are some of the basic things that you can talk to uh, the patient about. But now we can get into the medications. Here we go. Well, there's really four, four main categories of medications, and each of these make perfect sense. The first one is diuretics. Well, think about it. The person has fluid overload. Their lower extremities are swollen up. They need something to help them lose that fluid from their body. And by far, the most common is Lasix. Lasix, also known as furosemide. Furosemide. Probably the most common. And just as an aside, you need to watch their potassium levels because it can be, it can sometimes be a low when somebody's on Lasix. Next one is a category of drugs known as ACE, known as ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors, as most of you know, are really used to blood pressure management, but they're really important in CHF because they have protective mechanisms. And also, um, when a person is uh, when a person has CHF, they probably have high blood pressure as well. So this is really important. And lisinopril is probably probably the most important. Um, there's other ones in Canada like ramipril. You know, they all have pril in their, la in their endings. The third uh, category of medications used to treat CHF is beta blockers. Beta blockers. Now, beta blockers, uh, for example, metoprolol and uh, carvedilol, um, they're really important because of, uh, well, several reasons, actually. Well, first of all, because they're blood pressure medicines, they also contribute to the management of blood pressure but they also reduce the heart rate and that's really important because when you reduce the heart rate um, that uh, is uh, helping the heart because the heart in CHF starts to beat faster as a compensatory mechanism so you want to uh, get their heart rate down and another thing is uh, that beta blockers can do is they can help prolong that filling time that we talked about at the early part of the video and uh, that's really important. The final uh, drug that uh, by far probably the most powerful drug is digoxin and, and digoxin actually makes the heart stronger. It increases uh, cardiac, cardiac contractility. contractility. It's a positive ionotrope. Now, those of you, uh, you know, probably learned this in your early part of your training. Ionotrope. Um, and uh, this uh, medication basically makes the ejection fraction go up mm, pretty pretty important so that's a basic uh, presentation about uh, congestive heart failure also known as CHF